Hi everybody, thanks so much for stopping back at the Cranberry Cornstalk YouTube channel. Today I have a special video that's going to show you how we make candles here. I know I just made a video about candles, but this one I'm going to show you more how we start the candle, how we melt the waxes, what kind of waxes that we use, how we melt them, what we melt them in, that type of thing, and then I'm going to show you the ending part, how we finish them. The last video I think I showed you just basically the pouring and some of that type of thing and how to set up the wick. I have a little clip in there for that this time, but it's mostly about the beginning and ending of the candle because I don't want to bore you. we got to do something different, right? But these are things that you can do at home. Now that being said, to sell candles, there's a lot of science to it. There is so much goes into the recipe, the temperature, the types of oils you use, so you can't really just make candles and sell them. There's a lot of, of um, legality to it and that type of thing. So thank you so much for stopping back at the Cranberry Cornstalk to see how we made them. You might like the part where we finish the candles, where we finish the jars. That might be something you can use on a jar of your own if you don't want to make candles. And that being said, make sure you hit like, share, subscribe, share our video to your friends and your family who love our primitive colonial decor. Make sure you hit that bell. That bell just tells you each time we release a video, we try to release them Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. And I think that's everything. Guys, check us out if you're around Saxonburg, Pennsylvania area. We'll be at the Saxonburg Arts Festival for uh, next Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday and then we'll be at Penn's Colony uh, the two weekends after that so check us out if you're in the Saxonburg area look for the Cranberry Course Stock YouTube um, tent will be there those weekends and we have lots of primitive cute colonial decor some of it that you've seen on our YouTube videos so check us out and that being said let's roll Okay guys, so if you're gonna burn a candle, you'll want a type of wax that is a healthier version. So I always choose to use soy wax in my candles. Um, the picture here, this is paraffin, which I don't use in the jar candles. Um, I was making some harder candles, some pillar type candles too. You can see how hard it is and hard to get apart. I'm gonna show you if you decide to make um, candle warmers and wax melts that type of thing this is the kind of wax you would use for that this is the kind that you don't actually burn with a wick and um, it just gets a little bit harder now I do you be use beeswax in all of my candles I have a recipe and a percentage and a ratio that I use beeswax with so um, I'm just going to show you really quickly here how I break up if you do get a paraffin um, block like this what I do <clears throat> and again, this is just for melts or types of things that you're not going to actually burn with a flame. It's just a little bit healthier alternative to do soy. But I just wrap it in a big old towel like this and I have the edge of my porch is cement. So it has a real sharp corner and I just hit it against that corner and it breaks it perfectly. Now it depends on what size your slab is. You can even measure it by um, breaking it where, where the size is that you want. You'll want to get it small enough to fit in your melting pot or your um, your measuring wax pan so you'll just break it up in chunks wrap it in your towel and there you go good to go and you can see here as I unwrap the wax it's all different sizes so you just make it the size you want to fit in the pan and like I said in this case this particular video clip I am making um, some taper candles and things like that that you don't actually burn so it's not unhealthy it's just um, things that are more for looks and you can see how hard the wax is that's not the type of thing that you want to make a jar candle like I'm going to show you here but I just want to show you how I break this up and um, get it ready for the pillar type candles I do put beeswax in this as well I like the effect of the yellow and what it does the creamy consistency um, for all of the candles, especially my taper candles. It comes in the, this little pellet form from Candle Science is where I get mine. It's a wholesale dealer. It's just a perfect little wax. I love it. I use it in all of my candles. I put it in my wax melter. Um, this is a Presto pot that my husband made for me. Um, he just 
Well, first I'm going to tell you, uh, I set the temperature, you want to heat your wax up, this type of wax, about 180. So I set it slightly under 200 and almost every time I can get the perfect um, temperature for the wax. It's as hot as it, well, you don't want to burn your wax, so you don't want to go over the 200. I just keep it there the whole time. And this is the Presto pot. Like I was saying, my husband just drilled a hole in it and he put that little spout on there for me to drain my wax out. And it just it's, it works perfectly for me. Don't forget your scented oils, whatever kind you want. Usually an 8 to 10% ratio is what they tell you to use. Um, here I'm moving back to the jar candles. I'm just going to kind of show you again how to get your jar candle set up. with. Uh, we use little bow ties here and of course our wick and our little pad down in there. And then our blackened wax once it's melted. So the next thing I do is once the wax is dried, which usually that takes overnight at least, I put the label on for our company name, the Cranberry Cornstalk name, and I like to decoupage over top of that. I just decoupage the whole jar and then I come back and you'll see in the next section there that I do put like a hand stained gauze over top of the decoupage and then I press the decoupage into the gauze that is stained and it makes a nice hard um, stationary gauze. It sticks to the jar. It just makes it look really prim and when it dries it gets even more brown than it is here. And I'll just let you see how, how I do that. I just press the fabric onto the jar and keep pressing with the bristles of the brush and make sure they're adhered to the jar and keep decoupaging over top of all of the threads in the gauze.
Here you can see I'm just uh, taking some cinnamon and I am dusting all of the jar where it's still tacky. I try to do it while it's still tacky with decoupage. Just dust cinnamon all over it and it gives it that real grungy uh, primitive look. Here I ended up with a little bit extra layers where I didn't want them to be over top of the product name and I wanted the cranberry cornstalk to shine through. So while it was still wet, I wanted to separate some of the threads so you could still read uh, the company name, the cranberry cornstalk company. And I'm just messing with a little bit while it's still wet and then it'll dry real perfect for me then. Nice and hard. And you just continue to do that with each jar over and over and over again until you get your full batch um, completely uh, primmed up. <laughs> 